carry on time. This is a video card. In fact, it's the GE Force GTX 460 released of, oh, about seven years ago. And I suspect it's going to be a really great example of a massively parallel processing type element. Uh, my first hint of that is the top here is a heat sink and uh, it is quite large, has a fan built in, some heat pipes. Uh, this looks like a sort of a 100 watt class heat sink. And below that, uh, my first a real strong indication, there is a, a massive bit of semiconductor going on. Uh, I cleaned this off. There's, of course, it was thermal paste obscuring the name here, but this is a NVIDIA chip. Um, it, it's huge. I mean, it's like uh, 45, about 35 millimeter. It's one of the largest uh, integrated circuits I've uh, seen. So um, it's going to be really interesting trying to get that out. But before we do that, uh, let's take a look at the actual overall architecture. Give us really strong hints. We're looking at an incredible uh, bandwidth type product. Uh, there's like uh, some connectors and of course on one side to connect to some video monitors uh, a power system here to uh, power up the circuit board uh, this connector here is probably not sufficient for, for supplying the power to keep this chip running so they actually have to bring on external power uh, directly from the personal computer power supply another hand of course we're looking at some massive processing um, these are of course are some uh, memory chips uh, they look like they're a graphics DRAM from Samsung you can see some spots weren't populated uh, as always they sell these cards in a, a number of ranges I think the 460 was the, their mid-range card in this family but uh, one of the things you do for better performance is put yeah, more graphics memory on you can see in some cases uh, that's just a stuffing option down here of course the connector back to the computer uh, this is a PCIe bus this is of course the biggest one uh, in the standard 16 lanes so a tremendous amount of data pipe to the uh, CPU to this chip and of course that makes sense because you're trying to move lots and lots of data let's um let's see if we can get the integrated circuit out here and see what it looks like okay well I got the uh, the lid removed basically it's epoxy down to the substrate uh, the neat thing about epoxy is that they have something called the glass transition temperature if you get them hot enough the epoxy goes into a, a liquid light state and then you can pry things apart usually without damage now my technique's a little bit crude I used this uh, butane torch to provide some bulk heat and then I just pushed it over with a uh, hot air rework station which is definitely a more sophisticated uh, heat source and uh, I'm pleased I've got it off without damage uh, and we start to see just a, a tremendously large silicon die uh, I'll clean off the uh, goop on top there okay so right in here is the silicon die it, it's huge 25 millimeters by 15 millimeters you only see these gigantic dies in three kinds of classes of products uh, very high-end CPUs uh, graphics processors of course and then uh, field programmable Gatorades usually uh, Around the perimeter of the uh, silicon die, you can see a lot of placements of uh, coupling capacitors, basically trying to stabilize the power system for the semiconductor. Uh, you can see it's mirror-like uh, in its construction. That's because the back was polished. Uh, below that, the, basically, the silicon's sitting on a little tiny circuit board, but it gets a special name called a substrate. Uh, basically, these look like circuit boards. The material is very similar, but this one's a slightly more brittle material, but allows some really fine traces to be laid down. So what happens is we've got the uh, semiconductor here, it flips upside down, there's balls on it, which then gets soldered onto this thing called the substrate. Then the substrate, of course, gets soldered down to the actual uh, circuit board carrier. And then, of course, we see the glue marks uh, where that uh, metal lid was put onto, so it could provide a, a path for the heat here to conduct to the top lid, and then, of course, to that uh, gigantic heat sink. Now, all the circuitry is basically upside down, so what we have to do is now remove the substrate to get the die off. So here's the die. Uh, we were previously looking at it uh, in this orientation, the back side, but now we can see the uh, top of the actual silicon die, which contains the transistors. Uh, there's a little bit of resin left over. The acid didn't strip everything off, but uh, also it's hard to see here, but let's me insert a micro photograph and uh, what you can see there is actually the connection points to the balls and uh, there's basically a top metal layer here on this uh, entire integrated circuit uh, to get you some sense of how huge this thing is uh, this is the xbox 360's gpu and i, I thought it was a huge die um so here you go um all oh, over twice as big i would say so uh, real demonstration of these gpus that uh, have incredible number of transistors in fact the web tells me that there's a uh, a two billion transistors sitting here on this little uh, chunk of silicon. So let's just take a look at the whole uh, die, but uh, to do that, I just wanted to talk about um, the photography technique. I normally use a microscope, of course, for these type of analysis, but this die is just so huge. I've had to resort to my copy stand for my uh, SLR camera and the die sitting there. 
Uh, taking a look at the die straight down, of course, uh, again, confirmation, there's a lot of metalization on the top. Uh, that's, of course, to uh, create connection so those balls can be put onto the uh, die to connect to that substrate. Well, there we go. Look at some of the uh, packaging technology for uh, semiconductors at the very top end. And just a quick peek at uh, just a massive die and uh, real confirmation that there's all incredible amounts of uh, transistors uh, in these uh, GPU cards.